Hello everyone and welcome to the second, sec- the second, the second, I'm not off to a good start, the second Frazzle cast. I'm joined by the legendary Trout and Semp, one of the Maddox. How are you doing, well? I'm good, thank you very much. I greet your humble listeners slash viewers with much enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, Will of the Maddox, or Your Boy Maddox, or Maddox Productions 1, depending on what website you're approaching me on. Yeah, because <clears throat> you're quite different on YouTube and uh, Twitter, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a lot more, well, formal in quotation marks on YouTube, but on Twitter, I, I meme it up a bit. But your your un- unrequited love of Troughton is uh, present on both of them, or all of them, rather. Yeah, it's omnipresent across all platforms. That's it's as true in real life as it is across all the social mediums. Yeah, the, the more I think about Troughton's era, the more I think he may be my favorite doctor. But then I can't tell if that's like just me really liking this doctor or your macro style mind control started to work. Yeah, yeah my influence. <laughs> I've got like a big TV screen on the wall with your face on saying Troughton is bay, Troughton is bay. <laughs> You see, he is the best for reasons X, Y, and Z. And in this essay, I will... Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of of Doctor Who, I've got like some podcast questions because believe it or not, I actually came prepared. Um, So number one, if you could name your biggest pet peeve in the Doctor Who fan, well, Doctor Who general, what would it be? Ooh. uh, So in, in... Not just fandom, just the whole show. Yeah, anything. Um, anything who related. Ooh. Probably the fact that, that we're still doing Gallifrey stuff oh, yeah, that's in fair. the TV show. Hmm. Instead of moving on and doing new things, we're still like lingering around Gallifrey. And even though it's a dead horse at this point, why are we still hanging around it sort of thing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one because Series Eleven really felt like it was going in a new direction, didn't it? Then Series Twelve was like, "Nah, yeah, not ten- doing this. Just turn and left." For lack of a better term. Yes, Series Series Ten and Eleven felt like okay. So we tried that whole resurrecting them and you know hell bent thing that didn't really work. Let's just kind of put it in the past and forget about it. And then Series Twelve is like, "No, let's <laughs> continue it." Let's bring it back, and moreover, we're probably going to delve deeper into it in the future with this whole division stuff. Oh yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, Doctor Doctor Who, you you do realize you have an identity outside of that goddamn planet, you know, right? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I, th- I think um, well, Russell up, well, and Moffat for up to uh, about CU seven got it right, where it just kind of incorporated the fact Gallifrey wasn't there anymore as part of the Doctor's character, like, that was, like, that, like, the show changes in order to survive, so it changed from not having the Doctor be a runaway to having the Doctor be, you know, the last of the Time Lords, which I felt was a nice development, but, but no, we needed the trailer bait, because we always need trailer bait. Yeah, that's, it's kind of a shame. Um, I do have another, even, uh, a, a smaller pet peeve, like, my most pettiest pet peeve. Oh, yeah. That has nothing to do with Gallifrey. It's the fact that there is a town called Christmas. I don't know why that really bugged me. <laughs> I should have guessed Doctor, it'd be more fat related. It's just a town. Yeah, uh, it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's a town called Christmas, and it happens to be Christmas themed. That just chances? that really gets under my skin. <laughs> don't know why. It's a Christmas special. And I get, How about we set I, it in a town called Christmas? That is Christmas themed. <laughs> I know the Doctor has that line about why why is an island called Easter? A town can be called Christmas, and it's I get it, but like no, no, it's too, it's oh, oh no, I can't I can't describe it. it just get oh no, it annoys me. <laughs> just add it to the pile of things Moffat did wrong. Yep, it's getting pretty big. It's starting well, to uh, dominate uh, the room. Yeah, um, but you know, I've I've been recently trying to tone down my. Moffat bashing to when it's relevant because uh no I did I am fairly controversial for that point of view like yeah pretty much 95 of 95 percent of the time I talk about Moffat it's like he did this thing bad but um 
you know, eventually that kind of um, it's not a negative re- reputation. It's more like a uh, a controversial, constantly like um, you know what I mean when I do, that I kind do. of re- yeah, I, that kind of gets tedious and boring after a while. And you know, I just kind of want to take a step back from that and focus on how much I love Daddy Troughton and <laughs> and Seventies Who and Hartnell and even Russell to an extent. So yeah. yeah. Although we can still talk about Moffat here if you want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's fair. I, I, I kind of feel the same. I, I, there was a point where I was getting to like, I'm talking more about the stuff I don't like about Doctor Who than the stuff I do like. Maybe maybe it's time to tone down a bit. Like, yeah, I think most of the videos that I've done, on my, in fact, I think all of the videos about the podcasts on that channel have been uh, Moffat related, and some of them have been positive. Like, I did a science in the library analysis, but like, I kind of think he's he, he's not the only figure in Doctor Who. He, there are other writers that I'd like to touch upon, so I'm just going to try and like keep them in the corner, keep them in the, like a naughty child, have, have, have them in the corner for half an hour. Yeah. Or horny jail. That's, that's fair enough. Oh yeah, horny jail, send them to horny jail. Please. Along with Matt Smith. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Spe- speak- speaking of pet peeves, though, uh, I was thinking of one the other day, and I think this is my number one pet peeve, and I think. It's something I don't hear people complain about enough. It's those fans who, for some reason, always say Donna should have been there in Midnight or the 2009 specials. And, like, it, it, it's ridiculous. I even, I even, and this is 100% true, on Instagram the other day, I saw someone say they wanted Jenny from The Doctor's Daughter to be a companion up until the end of time and be there in Midnight. And I was just like, what? Did, did, did you see The Doctor's Daughter? Did you see the 2009 specials, let alone The Doctor's Daughter? That completely misses the point. Hugely. Blows yeah. out of proportion. Midnight works because there is no companion there. <laughs> exactly. C- can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Like, yeah. don't make it a third. Yeah, you tell him, Dad. <laughs> it's mental. Yeah, like, there, w- there would be a mediator, and therefore there would be no conflict. That's, exactly. Then Midnight just wouldn't be much of a story, basically. Same with the Ugh. 2009 specials like Waters of Mars. The laws of time are mine, and they will obey me. Get in there, Dad. I'm here with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the 2009 specials, but, you know, they are like that for a reason. They're to demonstrate how alone and how I am the last of them all <laughs> he is. Yeah. And yeah. with no friends there to, you know, help help comfort him he it sends him on that downward spiral to his death exactly it's exactly. it's quite profound i, I do have a bit a of a soft spot for those specials though like people say that they're it always breaks me when people say that the russell era going downhill because like i have so much nostalgia for those specials i really feel like that was when my as a doctor who fan you know everyone has like that peak where they, the show can do no wrong that was 2009 with me and then people are like oh nah 2009 russell should have left sooner no, we shouldn't. Stop it. Stop trying to kill yeah. my childhood. I, I have a love-hate relationship with them. Like, I do think the end of time gets too much shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and the War of Mars is fun, and I even like the next Doctor. It's just, mm. I just kind of prefer Doctor Who when there is a companion. But, you That's know, I do, I do understand why those specials don't have one. Like, that is the point of them. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I, I'm, I I don't really mind it when the Doctor's on their own, but like, I can't see why. I prefer a, seri- a series like Series 4, Season 13, to a series with the Doctor on his own, which would just get boring after a while. Yeah. Well, that's that's funny, that, because uh, whenever, whenever Doctors 1 through 11 are alone, I find them kind of like... I feel like there's something missing. Like... Um, it's why I'm not really a big fan of the Deadly Assassin with the Fourth Doctor or Ooh, controversial. Um, like, yeah, very controversial. They're gonna have your <laughs> shot. <laughs> or that pit, or like those parts of the Eleventh Doctor's timeline where he's just not with Amy and Rory; he's just on his own. Or um, mm. like even some expanded media stuff where like the Seventh Doctor is alone and like no companions with him, and I'm just like, yeah, but there's no. <laughs> um, but with the twelfth and thirteenth doctors, I kind of wish they were alone more often. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I, I like Yaz, but I prefer a series where thirteen is 
not not necessarily on her own, but more independent, maybe like a companion there, but more going off and doing their own thing in stories, like, um, yeah. I suppose like Ace, really, in a way. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Ooh. So, that's, that's my pet peeves and um, the other topic that we were just discussing that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> wow, my my memory is crap. Uh um yes, next next question, uh humble sir. <laughs> next question. Oh okay, right. This this is one I've I ask quite a lot of people. If you could travel back in time, right, but you could only travel within the history of the Doctor Who production office as a writer. So you can go back and write a story for any doctor at any point, but you have to replace an existing episode, which would it be? Okay, so I can't like go back and save the missing episodes, right? Um, no. You could replace the missing episodes, uh, but then that would be missing as well. Okay. Uh, I, I, oh, oh god, yeah, oh. Um, I guess I replace the Space Pirates because I have that to watch soon in my upcoming marathon, and I'd rather not. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> it's not I that love bad. Tr- <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I love the Troughton era. I will stand up for the Troughton era endlessly over and over again, but I will not defend the Space Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's completely fair. Like I love uh the Tom Baker era. I especially love Hinchcliffe's era, but I can like stories like Revenge of the Cybermen or uh, Underworld, Invasion of Time, yeah, do what you want with them. Let let the dogs at them. Release the hounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. I love the Tom Baker era, but I will not. I will not um, justify season eighteen. I don't like yeah. season eighteen. That's my least favorite out of his seven. That is totally valid. <laughs> but what's his best though? Uh, season thirteen. Yes, best okay. season of Doctor Who ever, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. It's it's in my top five. Um, mm. Yeah, I'd replace the space pirates with, I don't know, anything better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then it'd be missing all the other trunks. Oh yeah, but you know, at, at least at least the audio would be more engaging than the audio of the space pirates. Yeah, I, I often wonder if the space pirates didn't exist, would people stop banging on about the trout you know, being repetitive? Because that kind of feels like it was just a generic. Troughton's story or generic based on the siege so people will come often and say oh look Troughton's generic when he's not yeah like I I uh, contest that point of view people have when they're like oh it's just the siege based on the siege based on so lazy such a lazy writing so formulaic I always contest that by saying yeah. no that's oversimplifying there are there are a lot of di- um, diverse elements in all those stories that make them unique from each other but not so in the space pirates. <laughs> yeah. The only, un- the only unique thing about the space pirates is the fact that the Doctor and companions are barely in it because the actors were away filming the war games. Yeah, oh, well, and at least we got the war games out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you've got to sit through the space pirates during this watch along. Not watch along, watch through. No. Uh, <laughs> at least, at least I've, at least pretty much all the other stories I've watched. Have been, have been better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then again, I've still, I've still got the Moffat era coming up in like however many months it is when I reach it. So, you know. For me, it only starts getting dry and and painful. Um, Kapal one in Kapali's era, like series six, seven, is not good like at all. It's a really weak series, but at least. I feel like they're over quickly, and it's I can get through them. I'm like, finally, it's fucking over. But then with the Capaldi, like, there's so many elements that they just constantly drag out. Like, am I a good man, Clara? I don't know. And then the finale, I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not a good man. I'm. A, I'm, an, I'm an idiot. It's like, okay, is that it then? Yeah. <laughs> See you next year, guys. So, so that those twelve episodes That's... were a complete waste of time then. Yeah, I can see that. I've kind of um flip-flopped over the years like back in the day i was like yeah the smith era uh, is better than the capaldi era but now i'm kind of the reverse purely because i think the capaldi era has better acting <laughs> and like it also has better characterization but only if you enjoy those characters 
Like I don't like Clara. Yeah. She is she is relatively well characterized and it's a, but it's a shame that I can't really get anything out of that because I just don't like her. Yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't really say Smith was given any bad performances. I can always tell that he's at least trying. It is just the characterization is so so weak. Like in Nightmare and Silver, you can just tell he's not comfortable and that he doesn't want to be doing this. But then, naturally, Game and Moffat forced him to, so it really feels like his performance suffered. Yeah, and you know, Series Seven is quite bad. It's quite an ugly thing. Yeah, it's just malformed. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem I have with a lot of quite a Doctor Who eras, where like they do a specific thing up to a point, and they just go in a different direction. Like Smith, it was going series five, three, six. Like you've got the fairy tale aspects for better or for worse. You've got some new ambitions, ideas, and series seven. It's just like just like a big splodge of mud. And then it's the same with yeah, Whitaker as well. For even if you hate series eleven, it's there's a tone the blockbuster. there. Oh god, don't don't say that word again. Not, not in the context of Moffat. 45 minute blockbuster. Every story is an event. It's own movie. Oh, I, hate, I hate how he did that. I hate it. And did, did you know Kill the Moon came about because of that? Like, Kill the Moon was pitched for Series 7 because Moffat was like, no, no, one big idea. Go on, what you got? And, Pete, and then I forget his name. Peter Harms was like, oh, I've got some, got some ideas. No, big ideas. Okay, what if the moon was an egg? And that's literally what happened. Wow. Yeah, I can actually kind of envision it as a series seven story, actually, <laughs> just without the hard hitting um, character drama. It would just be more throwaway and disposable, and bad sex jokes. Yeah. Oh, you. This is a. Oh, oh I can't even say that. <laughs> I wonder if Mummy Dad and M- M- Dragon. M- M- it's a space dragon, isn't it? I wonder if Mummy's space dragon and Daddy's space dragon had a good time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, so, so that's just a parody waiting to happen. That's like a sketch that's wait, waiting to be made. Ugh. It's yeah, interesting, that's... though, like, Series 7, I can't think of a single um, general consensus of which half is more popular. Like, everyone seems to either love or hate one, either half. Like, there's no... I can't say part one's more popular. I can't say part two is more popular. It's, it's a mess. Same, honestly. Like, like I used to defend series seven part two purely because it was different from the rest of the Smith era, but mm. that's a very shallow way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, and I later realized just how goddamn fucking bad all those, pretty much all those stories are, except for like maybe Rings of Akaten. Like at least that one seems to have. I like Hyde. Yeah, I wish I liked Hyde. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame though, because um, what's his name? Neil Cross gets a lot of shit for that episode for the ending, but that wasn't meant to be how it ended. It was Moffat who said, "No, I don't like this. Make it a love story." And so that's why the ending's so weak. It was literally sellotaped on. No joke. Uh, I still think. Damn it, Moffat. Yeah, same with Power of Three. Jim Will gets a lot of hate for the ending, but then it was Moffat. He said, go and spend some more time on Earth. Just have the Doctor save the day with the Sonic or something. That's literally what happened. Oh, <laughs> that's... That's crap. It is. It is. Moffat just did oh, not know what he was um, doing. Yeah. I can't. I honestly can't say which half of Series 7 I prefer, because they're both abysmal. <laughs> yeah. I suppose Series 7 Part 1 has less insulting sex jokes. Just just a bit. It's still bad and insulting, I mean, but less. It still has the divorce subplot and like yeah. feels way... It also feels way more... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, redundant, in a way. Like, why are we still hanging around Amy and Rory? No reason? Okay. Oh, and they're gone. Bye. <laughs> yeah, they should have left in uh, what's it called? God complex. God. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's that's valid as well. Even their appearances in like um, I mean, I don't like Doctor Widow in the wardrobe or Wedding River song, but their appearances are kind of like they still mean that they ended up in the same house and the same life. So it, it's not that bad. It's more like a returning appearance rather than a another subplot. So I can kind of live with them if it was their last appearances. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that would have been like a nice way for them to go out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, clothing times are bad, but their appearance is nice. Their cameo. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about Amy's um <laughs> Amy's career as a um as a model or like oh, a yeah. Where did that come from all of a gal? sudden? <laughs> we should just like one day I'm gonna be a model Rory <sighs> like I think I <laughs> I uh, uh, like how A the doctor didn't notice like the billboard with her face on it in, in the shop he somehow didn't notice it until like when she saw them it's like oh she made a name for herself the tagline the girl who's tired of waiting which is like oh that's so corny and then she named it after the st- after the smell of dirt after rain. <laughs> Who was like, yes, that is a beautiful name. Smell of shit after rain. Beautiful, beautiful. Get that on a billboard. Yes, girls. Yes, girls. Time for a night out on the town with the smell of petrichor. <laughs> <laughs> they probably fail, which is why she's unemployed in Series 7. Yeah, the, she then becomes a journalist or something, which, yeah. you know, a bit it's of a bizarre. career jump. <laughs> it is anyway, I'm about to crack open a cold one with the boys, so there we go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. So speaking <laughs> of closing time, what are you? That, that's a terrible segue. What are your top five Cyberman stories? Uh, Tomb of the Cybermen, my favorite story of all time. Even with all its problems, it's still just so nostalgic and beautiful and iconic and just. It's lovely. Um, uh, the invasion is up there as well. I just watched it the other day. It was it was fabulous and blew yeah. away surprisingly quickly for an eight parter. Hmm. Uh, then I get kind of st- the tenth planet is good as well. Mm, so okay. s- yeah, like I've I've gone back and forth on it over the years, but last time I did really enjoy it. Uh, oh god. I do like the moon bits. Um, it's fine. It's harmless. Yeah. Yeah. Wheel in Space is the weakest 60s man story. Oh, it's definitely. Just, yeah. Um, as for the others, oof, I don't know. Like, I do like Earthshock, but I do think it is a bit overrated. Just a bit. Ooh. Just, just a tad. Don't say that one here. Don't say that. We'll, we'll be spam with dislikes. Oh no! Um, like it's still it's still good. It's just not my favorite. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll hop over to the new who. World enough and time is pretty good. Did you get um, like a ten? It's yeah. It's my favorite Capaldi story. Oh, that's um, fine. Not heaven sent. Not heaven sent. <laughs> <laughs> heaven sent is a masterpiece. No. No. <laughs> Okay, that's my pet peeve there with Doctor Who fandom. Whenever that sentence is said, <laughs> like even if even if I agreed, it's still the most cliche thing that Doctor. It's right up there with "Don't skip nine. Like no. <laughs> well, you shouldn't really skip the ninth Doctor. He's, he's amazing, but yeah, it is annoying to yeah. keep saying. Yeah. Ugh. There's no point in shaming uh, someone because they didn't watch a series that came out 15 years ago and is quite dated visually. Yeah, that is fair enough if they want to, if they, because I love the Ninth Doctor, but you know, if they, if they're just not, not feeling his era, yeah, they, they should skip if they want to, you know. It's a bit, it's like a bit of an acquired taste. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, Tomb Invasion. Um, I guess Tenth Planet. Um, screw it. I'll say the Moon Base, and I'll also say Wild Enough and Time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think you're going to dislike my top five, though, based on everything uh, you just go said. For it. Right. Go for it, then. I won't judge. Starting from fifth. Try not. Starting from fifth. Wild Enough and Time and the Doctor Falls. Then. Mm-hmm. Tomb of the Cybermen. Earthshock. The Haunting of the Lodiodati and the Invasion. Oh, okay. Like, I was on board until Haunting of the Lodiodati. I, I don't understand Every... how people dislike it. I think it's amazing. 
Oh, it just kind of, oh, it just, it just kind of falls apart for me. It feels like a bit of a, uh, I, I don't know. It feels like weirdly incoherent in a way I can't really describe. Like, I think I just, I think it's just kind of the subversion for me that annoys me. Like, it's a haunted house story, and then it turns into a Cyberman story, except not really, because it's not really a Cyberman. It's a, it's like a willing convert or something, and I'm just, oh no, you know. Uh, I I don't mind. I think I think the shift is a bit sudden, and it does just feel like, oh yeah, we're in a Cyberman story now. Let's get on with that rather than, um easing in but like other than that and the argument at the end i think is amazing but i think it isn't really rooted in character it's rooted in plot which is a bit of a mistake so i don't really feel like they're arguing i feel like they're just saying they're just doing what they feel is right because jack told them to care if that makes sense yeah yeah oh jack's jack's appearance in series 12 is Oh, that's that was a hot mess. <laughs> I, I was actually loving series twelve up until Fugitive, you know. Like, if you'd asked me during those first four weeks how I felt about Jimmel, I would have said I loved the guy. I would have said I loved his new series. I loved his new era. But then the minute, well, not the minute, but literally Fugitive of the Redeemed airing, I went completely the other way. I was like, back to no Doctor Who's gone bad again. It's all canon. It's all lore. It's all boring. How how could he do that? How could anyone make me dislike a series just like that with one episode? It's admirable, yeah. in a way. And so many people are like, oh, it's an amazing episode. It's... Exactly. I don't see it. <laughs> it's, the... it's the greatest episode of the series. It makes all the others look boring. Praxis is boring in comparison because it has nothing to do with the overall plot. <gasps> and I'm just like, no, no, no. I prefer Praxis to Fugitive. Praxis is way better than Fugitive of the Jadoon. Yeah, it's, that's probably a hot take, but it is. Praxis is actually a story. <laughs> it is. It is. It it does feel very much like Pete McTigg had a story about a virus, and then a few people getting infected, and the doctor having to stop it. And Chibnall had an idea for a story about glow potting and uh, hotting, trotting, and um, beds and stuff. And he's like, "Nah, nah, sorry, sorry, Pete. I know you love this script, but I'm going to have to put these locations in here. But why, Chibs? Because I said so. And that literally just feels like what happened." Yeah, ugh. like maybe that's just my my flavor of Doctor Who. Basically, I do prefer Doctor Who when it's more anthology based in a way. Like you know, oh, yeah. oh we have one adventure. The adventure's all tied up, done. Let's move on to the next one. We're Feels having same. this adventure. Yeah, yeah, like like that. I don't like. I don't particularly unless like the odd occasion is fine. Like the Key to Time Saga, or like um, I don't even mind. Um, I don't even mind the cracks in time arc in series five, honestly. But I, my, I do not like Doctor Who stories that entirely exist to set up other Doctor Who stories, and that's what Fugitive of the, of the Jadoon is. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not a story in its own right. It's only there to go see. We're gonna do something enticing soon. Yeah, and it's annoying because that's what Moffat did, and it felt like Chibnall had learned from his mistakes. Yeah, like. Uh, the, of the Jadoon just makes me think of the wedding of River Song, which also only exists to set up future stories where, like, oh, who is the silence? Despite the fact uh, it's a series me. finale. Ugh. Yeah. I think um, uh, series, gives... I think series four had the right idea because turn left is very much there to set up the finale with like the stakes of what the darks are doing, but it's also a story in its own right. It's got like its own character arcs. It's got like little. It's well, it's got its own world going on literally. And then by that time that's concluded, and then you want to the cliffhanger with like Bad Wolf appearing everywhere. It feels like that story is tied up, and like it's it's done its job in setting it up and giving you its own story. Yeah, like uh, it's it's. I think that's the way to do it. If the setup needs to be its own story in its own right, I think. Um, the long game as well. Whereas like that did it. Yeah. Even though people don't yeah, like the long it. Game. But... Yeah, I'm not a fan of the long game, but it is it is its own distinct story. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't sit there going, um, oh, I please was, watch the finale. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Fugitive of the Jadoon is just like, see, look, here's a Jadoon story. Oh, Cla- Captain Jack turned up. He's gonna like tell you to tune into the, the finale, and he's also gonna tell you to tune in when he returns properly next time. 
Anyway, back to the Jude- Oh wait, it's another few it's another secret doctor. She's gonna tell you to tune in sometime soon to learn her secret. This story was an utter waste, wasn't it? Yeah. And people just liked it because they were surprised, which is a running theme across series twelve. Yeah, like do, does the fandom like I don't wanna comment on other people's taste. If that if this is the flavour of Doctor Who they like, then you know, fair enough. But like do people just like Doctor Who to be bait rather than substance, if you know what I mean? Yeah. I pr- Doctor Who stories to be stories. I don't prefer, I don't like Doctor Who stories that are like the dangling carrots, basically, to go, yeah, chase this. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And I actually prefer to have a series 12 now because it got it right. It, well, it got exactly, it got what I like about Doctor Who right anyway, where it was more focused on the stories, like a set of individual stories rather than teasing. I mean, it kind of did in Ghost Monday, but that was a throwaway line. It could have meant anything. But then, um, yeah, it was very much focused on itself and it didn't care about, it didn't really care about the past that much. And it worked on its own. I actually really, really like Series 11 now. Completely flipped. Yeah, Series 11 isn't, is, is pretty decent. It's got a few. Um like duff stories but yeah and you know some of the characterization could be a lot stronger but i do think it's still relatively decent yeah i think my issue with it at the time before series 12 i was a lot more enthusiastic about series 11 when it came out than i am now and it's always that thing of see this is such a great starting point what are they going to do with it in the future but then when you find out what they did do with it in the future you're just kind of like oh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, 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 they should be. I, I don't like how um these showrunners are kind of like having a series where they're setting up their tone and their style, and the next series they try something completely different. Like I can understand wanting to do something different, but like if you look at something like the Pertwee era, series eight, nine, and ten are very much similar in like their flavor and what kind of doctor they are. They kind of build on what came before in terms of structure. Same with Troughton actually, and um. And Russell got away with it because he had a different companion each series. But then with Moffat and Chibnall, like, it feels like they're literally just building the foundations for a house and then moving on to build another foundation for the house rather than finishing the house. If that makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. Because series 11 feels very Chibnall in a way. Like I have not watched Broadchurch or anything else Chibnall's worked on, but it does feel very much how I imagine Chibnall in a creative position would feel. Exactly. Um, But then series 12 kind of feels like he tried to reverse engineer a hybrid between (laughs) Russell and Moffat in a way. And he literally said that's what he did as well. Yeah, like it feels like he's... Because it's got the overcomplicated tune in for the finale kind of thing that, you know, Moffat did a lot. But it's also got a lot of Russell T Davies elements in there, like the Jadoon, like, you know, um, Doctor Master closeness if you know i mean obviously that's not exclusive to russell but you know yeah. there's, there's definitely a flavor there that yeah yeah it yeah, feels like yeah i i am excited for season series 13 though because um i hope because based on series 11 it definitely felt like chibnall looked at the backlash and he's listened to people for better or for worse but so for series 13 i hope he's learned again and we're getting like a nice middle ground yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by the possibility not the possibility, but we know that the TARDIS team has been significantly cut down. Yes. Um that's good. I I approve of that. Um an all female TARDIS crew for once. That's that's different. I know, I'm excited. I'm assuming excited about we that. don't Yeah, assuming Captain Jack doesn't join as a full time regular or we get another male companion, but Well I realised he won't be because um, he's in America at the moment and they're filming. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll be interesting, just 13 and Yaz, and then they can characterise Yaz some more. Yeah, yeah they said that, that for Series 12. Oh, God, yeah. Yaz is going to have so much development, and then she just kind of... She has a little bit, and then... I don't know. It reminds me of... Um, have you seen uh, Torchwood? Yes. I haven't seen Miracle Day all the way through, but I've seen all of Tor- the first three. Right. Because Chibnall's uh, era of Who so far and his work on Torchwood, which was the first two series, 
they kind of remind me of each other in a way because they have these big in- ensemble regular casts. And in both seri- Doctor Who Series 11 and Torchwood Series 1, there is too many for me to give a crap. Like, I do enjoy them all in brief bursts, but they do not work as an ensemble, and some of them I just don't feel anything for. But then, right towards the end of both Doctor Who Series 12 and Torchwood Series 2, we suddenly get these really character-heavy episodes. Like, in Torchwood Series 2's case, it was, like, fragments and exit wounds. And in Doctor Who Series 12's case, it was, like, Can You Hear Me? and Mm. Praxius and things like that, where it's, like, these really late-game attempts to characterize the companions to make you care about them. Yeah. It's, like, retroactive retroactive characterization in a sense and i guess that's just chibnall's thing <laughs> that i've noticed yeah so maybe revolution is it revolution yeah maybe revolution of the daleks will be like maybe his best episode yeah fingers crossed yeah yeah maybe i'm really excited fact, about maybe all I'll the... tweet that what oh i was just gonna say maybe i'll tweet that comparison i just came up with the uh the torchwood and series 12 thing because they are quite similar in a way yeah, I, I I give more of a crap about the Torchwood team though because they had episodes dedicated to them. I think Series Eleven should have had more episodes focused on individual companions rather than giving them all stuff to do in one episode and condensing it into fifty minutes. It it's odd because Chibnall feels good at handling bigger teams like dinosaurs on a spaceship. Yeah, the, 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 the char- more stuff to do. Yeah, even the characters in like the Hungry Earth, as much as that story kind of sucks. I still remember them more vividly than a lot of his characters in his own era. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Hungry Earth is that bad. I, I quite enjoy it. I used to enjoy it, but then I watched it and the original Silurian story back to back, and then I realised just how much of a clone it is. Oh, it's very much. I was like, oh. Very much a ripple. I love the ending, though. <laughs> I love the ending with um, Amy forgetting Rory. I think that's a great moment for the other Doctor. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, it, it, it's decent. It, it it's like I feel the same about that that I feel about Silver Nemesis. Yes, it is ripping off a much better story, but at least the elements it's ripping off is from a good story, so I can at least enjoy seeing them again, even if it's in a much more unambitious and original tone. It's, it's it's at least something I enjoyed before. So that's fair enough. I feel that way about the Crotons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's a pretty rip off Troughton story, but it's you know it's still the foundations are still solid enough, and you know it's it's whatever really. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, it, it's insane how much Bob Home has improved from Troughton to Petri. Like it's it, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It's what a glow up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like he's written some of the best Doctor Who ever, and then from what I've heard about the Space Pirates, it's probably one of the worst Doctor Who's ever. Yep, it is. I dare say, because I don't think the Crotons is that bad, honestly. I think it's I, it's lower tier among Troughton. Like, Troughton has a lot of fantastic stories like Power mm. uh, of the Daleks, Enemy of the World, Web of Fifth, Heroes from the Deep, Tomb of the Sidemen, Mind Robber, Invasion, so on and so forth. Um, like, if those are the top tier, then the Crotons is, like, kind of lower tier. Like, it's one of his weakest stories, but it's still fine. It's like... It's like, it's his equivalent of Planet of the Dead in a sense. Like, it's not a story you really think about or want to rewatch that often, but it's still fine in a sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's reliable. But then, yeah. But then the Space Pirates is the one glaring exception. <laughs> yeah. Every Doctor has a, has a, um, a Space Pirates. Like, with Tennant, it was Fear Her. Oh, God. That's my least favorite. The Russell. only. <laughs> the only. Um, like my bottom ten Doctor Who stories list. Maybe I'll make that for YouTube someday. It'll be very controversial, but um, my bottom ten Doctor Who stories list. It is a lot of Moffat, and I'm th- yeah. pretty sure Fear Her is the only Russell era story that makes it there. <laughs> yeah, you ranked all the stories, didn't you? Didn't you put um, New Earth and Fear Her in like the bottom twenty or something? Mm. Not good either of them. And I love the Russell era. Like I, I think it gets a bit too much flack at times. Like people who point to 
some very obvious writing decisions and they're like see that's a flaw like they call the 10th doctor a dick and it's like well yeah that's kind of the point of him exactly that's but uh there are only like i do love the russell era but there are like maybe five episodes of his that i don't like so yeah you know yeah i probably feel the same which five though new earth um uh what's the other one idiot's lantern Mm. um i think fear her voyage of the damned and the doctor's daughter and I, I'm, I also don't like Love and Monsters that much, but it's that's more of a it's not my thing kind of thing rather than yeah. me disliking it. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as everyone says it is. It's it's just a, it, it's just there, really. Yeah, Doctor Light laugh, stories though. aren't really. <laughs> Doctor Light stories aren't really my thing, honestly. Like Blink is really? good, but um. But Blink is a very good story, but it wouldn't really be among my favourites of all time, purely because it's just not really a Doctor Who story, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, I disagree personally, but I can't see where you're coming from. Yeah, like, it's still very good, but, you know... Well, like, Turn Left's good, though. I wouldn't... Yeah, turn... Oh, yeah, Turn Left. I think Turn Left is better than Blink, honestly. Ooh, stop it, man. I'm going to get, like, only dislikes. But I, I'm just a man of many hot takes. Can can you not just cash in and just and just love Moffat? Wouldn't life be so much easier? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Probably I mean, would I be. I love series ten. I love series ten. Series ten is good. Although, yeah. knock knock is better than Extremis. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I suppose it is. I like Extremis, but it's not the best episode ever. Yeah. Uh, um. But yeah, next next question. But I've rambled on a lot, and so you probably still have like a ton of questions. Oh, if if only I did. I'm flattered you think I do, but I really don't. Um, let's let's go to the uh, let's go to the most generic one, one that people struggle to often answer. If you were Doctor Who showrunner, what would you know you do? What would your era be? Uh, resurrect Patrick Trout. Okay, no. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> We've tried that. He doesn't want to come back. <laughs> Um, that's a good point because you know we as Doctor Who fans we always bang on about how oh, oh this thing's good this thing's bad why did they do this thing do this thing but then when we're put on the hot spot and we're like okay what would you do with the show we're just kind of like ah <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just make um, I it's not something I really think about but I would just make it more spacey like, I don't really want to hang around Gallifrey too much no, anymore. No. Like, Gallifrey's kind of a dead horse that's been beaten into the afterlife at this point. I just want Doctor Who to be more about exploring the universe and all of time and space. Like, it's a show with that in its description, basically. Like, why don't we do that more often? Like, the occasional Earthbound adventure is cool and all, but I always love uh, the Hartnell era, Troughton era, uh, mid Tom Baker era period where it was just kind of unpredictable. Like, oh, we could just go to any old planet. Um, and then, like, we barely ever see Earth. Like, whenever we turn up to Earth, it's almost like, oh, wow, yeah, this planet <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> um, That'd I, be interesting. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I just do a more further afield kind of show, like, a lot more, a lot more extra terrestrial in a sense which is funny because you'd think doctor who would already be like that but it's very much um uh, i think honest trailers once uh said this in their uh trailer for modern who they were just like explore all of time and space and yet everywhere they go is still extremely british <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's a fair criticism uh, so so you wouldn't be happy then if the show went back to an Earthbound Pertwee setting? Not really. Like, I do like the Pertwee era. Pertwee era is really good, but I think it it was very much... Uh, it was... I think it's very much lightning in a bottle. I don't think the Pertwee era could be done again. No. Um, I think the show... It was a necessary step back for the show at the time. I don't think... It really needs it again, though. I think Doctor Who needs to just 
what it really needs right now is to just kind of break free of the chains of like you know Gallifrey and stuff just go all out and just go to alien planets properly like completely unrestrained who cares about the hybrid or the division or any of that crap just just explore the universe yeah just explore the universe do do your thing and you know occasionally go back in time and meet people yeah I'd, I'd also do more stories set in the solar system, honestly, because I'm I astronomy is one of my passions, mm. and you know we have a few stories set on Mars. We've gone to the moon a few times. Sleep No More is like set in Neptune's orbit, and like Revenge of the Cybermen is like on the moon of Jupiter that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> I do more stories like that. It's like I'd like have them go to venus or something and then you know it's very educational about venus and you know that'll, that'll set my eyes twinkling i like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i prefer to really go at like the depths the dark and dingy depths of like the universe like some planet that's just yeah, hovering in the cool. sky so yeah yeah but... yeah that that would be cool too i wouldn't i wouldn't say no to good old earthbound stories though Although I don't think I'd keep the Doctor in it. I'd, I'd be interested to see what they'd do with that. I wouldn't want to see them with Unit again. But I, if, if there was like some excuse for the Doctor to stay on Earth, for whatever reason, and um, like, I'd be interested. A, a bit like the Vault, in a sense. Yeah, the, but actually you know. on Earth. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> in that one, he was just kind of like, oh, I have an oath. Oh, fuck it, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Mr. Beat with the Mr. Trick when they were with the vault that could have really had the Doctor stay on Earth for a bit, have some more Earthbound ones, which would have been interesting. You could still go to space, but make it a rare treat rather than a the norm, literally. Yes, that's valid. You know. Next question, if there's any more. Oh man, I'm running out. You're starting to you're draining me dry. Uh, all right, let's talk. Let's talk about let's talk let's talk about the real. Maddox Productions one. What what's uh, going on with your channel? What like plans have you got for the future? Ooh, interesting question. Mm. Um, because I'm not just a Doctor Who channel. I also do animations that don't really have anything to do with Doctor Who. They're just like fun little cartoons. Um, and I'm working on one right now. It's nearly done. It'll be coming out hopefully pretty soon. Um, and. I- I will also be doing more just Doctor Who think pieces in general. Like I've still got uh, the top 10 10th Doctor videos. Uh, mm. ten, 10th Doctor videos? My top <laughs> top 10 Doctor stories video to work on soon. And all the other um, modern Doctors. And then I'll Smith probably is gonna just... Be fun. Oh god, no. <laughs> Save me. Um, I'll do a few more... Um, I've got a few ideas, like a few specific think pieces. Like I want to do a specific Trout Nera appreciation video, like uh, my oh. love letter to the second Doctor in a sense. And I'll do like a few more animations. Um, it'll be it'll be quite snazzy. I'm I'm winging it basically. Like I do have a few. I don't have a long term plan or anything. I just kind of work on things. You don't have your like, five year plan worked out. Chibnall no, would No, no, I do. <laughs> uh but but yeah it's it's that's what's going on with my channel at the moment um and my channel is receiving quite a a burst of popularity at the moment i mean it's still like 300 odd subscribers it's still not like setting the internet on fire or anything but like you've quite still my got a few hundred i've got 20 oh <laughs> <laughs> um because I started way back in like 2013 when yeah. I was a lot more. I wasn't really doing co- Doctor Who content back then. It was more specifically uh, my uh, series of animations, Maddox and Friends, um, oh, yeah. which are which are basically just cartoon versions of my life, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know they they they're fun, and you know I'm still working on them to this day. But recently, um, with uh, with my extreme activity in the Doctor Who fandom, I was like, uh, you know what, let's try and connect both my Twitter and my YouTube worlds in a sense, and let's uh, 
do actual Doctor Who um, videos. So that's kind of brought in new people to not only watch my cartoons and stuff, but to also just stay for my outrageous opinions. Yeah, your your Doctor Ooh. ranking one's really good. It's really well made. Thank you very much. I'm very proud of that video. <laughs> it, it, it may just be because we have the same top three Doctors, so I wasn't really that insulted, as I imagine some people would have been. Daddy Charlton, Daddy Tom Baker, and Daddy Eccleston. They are all top tier, top tier Doctor Who's. Yeah, my, my, mine goes, like, my favourite's Tom, then then it's Eccleston. Maybe he's joint first or maybe he's second, I don't know. Then definitely, de- and then he's Daddy Charlton there. Then, then Charlton, then maybe Tennant, and then the rest of the Doctors are all joint fifth, because I can't rank them, because it hurts too much. That's valid. Mm. I've I've been growing tenants because when Tennant was um, the incumbent Doctor, he was like kind of my favorite because that's, that's just kind of a thing. Like when, uh, like not all the time, but like sometimes uh, the current thing is your favorite thing. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Like when Amy Pond was the current companion, she was like one of my favorites. Mm. But nowadays, I don't really think about her that much. Um. And it was a similar case with Tenant. Like Tenant was one of my favorite. Tenant uh, was like definitely in my top three favorite doctors during his era. And then I went through a phase of like not liking him because again that aforementioned mo- mentality that um, oh look at all these deliberate writing decisions they're obviously flaws with the era. Um, like I went through that phase, but nowadays I've just kind of I've come around on it and. I do like the Tenth Doctor. It's just he's not he's not really my flavor of Doctor in a sense. Like I do prefer a more enigmatic Doctor. Oh yeah. And Ten is very human. Ten is very human by design. Yeah. But you know, I I appreciate the effort of him. He's just he's just you know he's an acquired taste in a sense. Definitely, definitely, he was definitely my favorite because I started with Eccleston when I was how old was I? Two, two or three, and um. I have vague memories of watching him, but then with Tennant, I definitely grew up with him as a doctor. And I had all the DVDs, I constantly rewatched them, so he's definitely my doctor. I wouldn't say he's my favourite, but I can see why when you're watching him and when he's on, or at least the incumbent doctor, I can see why he'd be someone's favourite, because it's so unpredictable. It's so exciting to see where his doctor's going. And I just love to go back to that 2008-2009 mindset of what's going to happen, where's his character going to go next. I'm excited for that with Jodie, though, I have to say. I'm interested to see what they're doing with her. Well, Tennant is technically still the incumbent Doctor if oh. everything is to go by. <laughs> it's been less recently. There's been they've, they've toned down on the on the uh, on the Tennant projects, and when I say that, it's still quite a too much Tennant. It, it says a lot that only one or two a week is 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 low, really. <laughs> The tenth doc, no, David Tennant as the Doctor, two thousand five to two thousand ten. Matt Smith as the Doctor, two thousand ten to twenty thirteen. Peter Capaldi as the Doctor, twenty thirteen to twenty seventeen. Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, twenty seventeen to twenty twenty. David Tennant as the Doctor, twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, sh- we shouldn't complain. It's good Tennant's involved with the show. Like it took fifteen years for Eccleston to be involved with it again. And then Tennant's just like saying yes to anything. Big Finish coming to him was like, "Yes, I'll do it." We don't know what it is yet, David. Tough, don't don't care. I'm doing it. Give me the scripts now. Yeah, it's it's still cool because you know back in around like 2014 ish time, hmm. uh, you know Big Finish only really went as far as like very very late Eighth Doctor, and there is always that feeling of oh, I wish like that feeling of unexplored territory like. Um, like, oh, I like that they can do like more stories with Peter Davison, but like, oh, if only they, if only they could like tackle the Tenth Doctor and give him more stories. And now we have that, and it's like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> his his ten ten and Donna big finishes are fantastic, though. I have to say. Yeah, they're great. Um, I'm looking forward to the Martha ones whenever they happen. I hope they happen yeah. soon. <laughs> I hope they do something good with their relationship. Like maybe they show them on maybe nicer terms because ten could be a bit unpleasant to Martha on occasion and it gets a bit mean 
on occasion. Like, like at the end of Smith and Jones, you really feel like this is the beginning of a new partnership. Can't wait to see where they go in. And Lonely Son is like, yeah, one trip, then back home. You're not replacing him. It's like, oh, okay. Fine. Come down, yeah. Ken. Yeah, that's fair enough. Hmm. Woo! Uh, um, but yeah, Freema Adjaman, she did that Torchwood audio, so we know she's on board. So Lovely. that that would be great. Do Maybe think... they're just waiting until... Oops, sorry. Um... Oh, that's fair enough. Um, maybe they're just waiting until they can go back to the studio like properly because you know in lockdown conditions they can't really do that. It has to be like over Skype or whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of idiot would do it over Skype? Oh wait, never mind. Oh, I know, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, you you were saying? Uh, I forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my mind's gone blank. Curse my interruptions. Well, oh, yeah. Do, do you think um, do you think Billy Piper will be in these new Eccleston big finishes? I hope so, because I don't particularly want any pre ninth uh, pre series one audios. Because I know some people don't have a problem with that, but it's just kind of that period of the show that I'd rather just leave mysterious and unexplored. Like I don't particularly like big finish exploring the time war that much. No, I either. don't like them exploring season six B and thankfully they have mostly stayed away from that. Um, For now. I, the, the ninth doctor pre Rose is just one of those periods that I just, I don't want it. I just want more. Um, if any ninth doctor is going to happen, I want it to be nine in Rose basically. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'd be nice. But, yeah, because I, I think if they were to get Billy Piper, they probably would have announced it. Now, like, they've announced a tape, David Tennant box set that's coming out late 2022, and the Eccleston ones are coming out next year, and we don't even know what the stories are yet. I, I just feel that they may have revealed roses in it by now. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's possible. Like there's, there's, a new, there's a new Tom Baker companion that he's getting that, that that they announced recently, and she's not appearing until 2024, and they still announced that like, last month or something. Like, calm down, big finish. We're not going anywhere. Keep keeps them in your back pocket, love. Yeah, ugh. I've heard that um, like Tom Baker, he's just recording all these stories in bulk because he wants it to be like. When he dies, he wants his doctor to live on, like beyond him, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. There's and... nothing wrong with bulk recording, but it's just announcing so much in advance. It's a bit much. Yeah. It's kind of like Stan Lee, isn't it? Where he I recorded bet... all those cameos before he died. Yeah, yeah. That's. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's net. Is, is there any more questions or no, uh, no, you've you've drained you've drained me dry. No, yeah, no, I haven't. I've got I've got a couple left. Uh, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. It really drug me to the bottom of the barrel here. You couldn't have just gone a bit more in depth, could you? Oh, but I like questions, and sometimes I just reach. I just hit a bl- a brick wall, and I'm I just frantically search for anything to continue the conversation. <laughs> I'm bad at leading the topic, basically. I can't even ask you like who your favourite doctor you is because he's, in... he's ingrained in your identity. Patrick Troughton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um... If, if anyone wants me to go more in depth about that, uh, check out my channel at Maddox Productions 1. I'm shamelessly whoring myself out and <laughs> find my worst to best doctors video. And, you know, I, I just spunk all over him, basically. But, you know... If, if you're a fan of Matt Smith, then I'm sorry in advance, because I kind of trash talk him a lot. Yeah, he, he used to be my favourite doctor at one point. Uh, luckily, I found your cha- I like found your Twitter account on your channel after I realised I didn't like him as a doctor. I, I just tried to think <laughs> how I would have reacted if he was still my favourite. I was like watching you. like I, I don't even know what kind of things you've got up to with his, with his figurines or anything, but just if I'd seen them. Christ. <laughs> Because I, me disliking the Eleventh Doctor never, it was, it never used to be the case. Like I actually kind of liked the Eleventh Doctor when he was airing, yeah. and during the Capaldi era, I actually preferred Matt Smith because purely because I was like Matt Smith is more alien, therefore he is better. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it was more, it's more a recent thing where, mostly thanks to my boyfriend's influence, because um, 
he just before watching he used to hate doctor who but without actually watching it he kind of just hated it based on reputation alone <laughs> and then he watched the whole show with me and he's actually accompanying me with this marathon and the only doctor who he actually fully despises with every fiber of his being is the 11th doctor yeah i've, I've seen his twitter account was his name at the 11th doctor hate account yeah, it, it used to be the Alan Doctor Hate account, but he has since rebranded because um, he, because both of us don't really want like that controversial thing to be our image. That's sort of thing. Even though we do still hold those opinions, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be rough when we reach it. Oh dear God. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of thanks to his influence that I don't like the Eleventh Doctor anymore that much. Um, mm. But you know, it's I I. Um, there are a few things that irk me about him anyway like Matt Smith's acting a lot of the time the over sexualization of the character the over dark the over darkization that's not a word you know what I mean yeah. the fact that they try playing him so intimidating when he just can't pull it off kind of thing I, I suppose I can see where you're coming from I, I don't mind his some of his dark moves mainly in series 5 in series six, it gets a bit over the top. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's my that's 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 my answer to that question. I can't even remember what the question was anymore. It just it just all, all conversations with you either go to to trout and love or uh, Moffat hate. It was, <laughs> it was it was it was like the be- my favorite doctor, and you know that's that's the gi- that's a given basically. <laughs> why, why, why don't we try somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle. How do you feel about? McCoy, answer carefully. McCoy, I'm very mixed on. Like I, the Fenric is the best story ever, and I will knock you a word against it, or I will beat you to death through Skype. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's it. I I respect the direction the McCoy era was going in. It's not my flavor, but season twenty five is sexy. So <laughs> you just criticize Moffat for being too sexual, and then all of a sudden you're calling it sexy. Yeah, but but when I do it, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, someone actually someone actually responded that once. Um, like I I criticized the Moffat era for being sexy, but then I said something is sexy. I can't remember what. And uh, Genesis of Andrazani on Twitter was like, "It's funny how you call like the you call out the Eleventh Doctor for being too sexual, and yet you're probably one of the most sexual uh, Doctor Who fans on Twitter." And then someone just responded like with that with a with that screenshot from the simpsons of homer talking to marge and homer's like yeah but when i do it it's cute <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely less creepy when you do it i don't really want to call yeah. it cute because that sounds a bit odd coming from me but still <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair enough um yeah mccoy mccoy era um it's it has a goldilocks zone like um Season 24, too corny. Season 26, too dark. Oof. Season 25, just right. Just oh. right. My, That's my Goldilocks zone for McCoy. <laughs> yeah. I, I love season 25, but season 26, I just... How can you not love... Ker- I mean, how can you not love Curse of Fenric? Honestly, I don't understand where you're coming from at all. <sighs> I... It's a good story. It's just, it just kind of, it loses me towards the end. Ouch. Ouch. Like it, like it sort of just goes. Um, like that's that's a typical McCoy thing, isn't it? Where um, he, where a story just suddenly diverges into, oh yes, Ace. I met this enemy off screen thousands of years ago, and uh, now this is round two. Type of chess. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 the series does do that, but the Curse of Fenric does it well. That's the difference, Maddox. Do you not see? Are you that stupid? That dumb? You don't understand the complexity and the genius behind it? Do. Yes. Good joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, uh, it was also, it's also a case where, like, uh, the first time I ever watched that story, it was on a pretty bad day for me. So that's kind of like associated that in my mind with it. But you know, that's that's yeah. more of a personal reason than than an objective criticism, so to speak. Um, but you know, it, it is still a good story. It's just like not my not my favorite. It's but it's still good. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm rambling. 
I'll, I'll, I'll take that as praise. I'll, I'll just take it as praise, um, even though it definitely isn't praise, but still. One of the things it does insanely well is Ace. Yeah. So, yeah, I I will stand. I stand Ace's development in Fenric. And least. visual, the visual direction is amazing, like unparalleled. I love, I love the score. Um, because oh, yeah. uh, what during uh my days in college, uh, I would like walk to and from Tesco, which was like a forty minute walk down a hill. And you know it was quite a mind-numbing journey. So I just have my um, my phone with me, with my headphones in, and I only had like Doctor Who soundtracks on my phone, and I just listened to them. And I specifically remember like just walking along with my haters gonna hate walk, listening to the Curse of Fenric soundtrack. <laughs> I can't get that image out of my head now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty sure it was raining during one time as well. So that that was quite atmospheric. Oh, nice and atmospheric. Moffat's currently chasing it down to try and get that image for his next show. Oh no! Did you did you watch Dracula this year? I did not. I've heard things about it. Yeah, it I've was so it's bad. Very, I've heard I've heard it's very Moffatty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you removed Mark Gates's name from it, and you told me it was just Moffat's work. I would believe you, because it does that thing he does where it starts really well, nice and solid. It wavers a bit in the middle, but you still really feel like it's going to stick there, and then it just plummets. It's like a fairground ride. It literally just goes straight down into the stratosphere. Actually, no, not into the stratosphere. It goes so far back into its arse that you genuinely cannot find it again. Uh, and he hasn't learned from his mistakes as a writer. He's, just, he's indulging in, his, in what he thinks is clever and what he thinks works. And it, it's annoying, because he used to be such a good writer, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, tis a shame, but you know he he has his own distinctive vision, and some people like it, and I just yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah, he, he's currently working in theatre, writing a play about um like a couple, like when, like in coupling, which is actually quite good. So as long as he stays there, as long as he only ruins his own work rather than ruining Dracula, Jekyll, Doctor Who, Sherlock Holmes, you name it, then um as long as he's ruining his own stuff, then I can ex- <laughs> yeah. live with him existing. Pretty much, yeah, but he'll always come back to Doctor Who. Like, he's recently, because he's been doing, like, those um, uh, those lockdown thingamajigs and, like, writing short stories for them. And after each one, he's always like, this is my last contribution to Doctor Who. And then he always comes back, like, a couple of months later. It's like, I'm finally putting Doctor Who behind me. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. We we all know you're gonna write like half of the novelizations of your own stories. I wouldn't mind seeing that again in honesty. I, I did like his Day of the Doctor book. I have heard things about it and I'm morbidly curious. I almost want to pick it up, but I think I'd be too annoyed <laughs> to read. <laughs> it, 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 it really depends on which showrunner's style you prefer. So if you prefer Russell, like I prefer the Rose novelization. I think it's amazing, but I'm very much I prefer Russell's style kind of thing he did with the show whereas i'm not a fan of Moffat, so i like the book i think it's really well written and really enjoyable but it doesn't really appeal to what i like about doc 2 all the target novelizations yeah. whereas rose really does That's... it really gets what i like about it and and that, that one's worth reading yeah i i like russell's style so i'll if i go for any of them i might go for that or the city of death novelization which people don't yeah. really talk about enough um, or the curse of fenric <clears throat> which i read recently and of course it was a masterpiece ah is it as much of a masterpiece as Heaven Sent? It is more so a masterpiece than Heaven Sent, which, my goodness, is definitely quite the masterpiece because Heaven Sent is a masterpiece. Yes, I just said that. I wonder if I wonder if I've included it in that account. You know, the stories that are better than Heaven Sent account, which you know, I I set up a Mimi joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's still um, going. I, yeah, it's still going. I feel like that it has a ton of scheduled tweets going like months into the future, <laughs> and everyone's everyone's just like, "Oh, this will just be a, ve- a relatively short account because there aren't many stories better than Heaven Sent." And I'm just like, "Ha ha 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 ha
Like, I, I, I wasn't evil about it. There are some stories that aren't better than Heaven Sent, and, you like know, Hellbent. I do recognize that. Like, like, yeah, I did not put Hellbent in that account. I did not put, like, Battle of Ranskorav Kolos in that account. Ugh. I didn't put the Space Pirates in that account, or Terminus, or, last or, like, or the Twin Dilemma. <laughs> but, you know, all the stories that it is tweeting, I, yes, I do genuinely think those are better than Heaven Sent. <laughs> yeah, you, you are right with most of them. Some of them. I know. I know the woman who fell to earth like really like caught some people off guard. <laughs> I, th- I think I prefer Heaven Sent. I don't. I don't think woman who fell to earth is that much worse. In all honesty, it's just a bit flabby. It needed to cut off the fat and really be a lot tighter. That's 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 a valid criticism, dear sir. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. <laughs> Unlike your criticisms of Curse of Fenric, yes, we're back at that. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Move on from Curse. Next question. Do you believe Curse of Fenric is a? Oh, sorry. Next question. Do you think the Curse of Fenric? Is... Oh, never mind. Next. <laughs> no, in all honesty, have you um have you watched much TV this year? And if so, what has been your favourite show there? Oh, good question. Um. Like, I've not really been watching any of, like, the up-to-date shows or anything, but I have been engaging in a, f- in a few, um, uh, like, in a few marathons and stuff. Um, mm. Like, it's, n- it's not really a TV show, but I did recently watch all of, like, the animated Disney movies this year. Oh, yeah. um, I've also been... Oh, yeah, I also watched all of Futurama this year, and uh, a lot of Family Guy as well, like Ooh. the first Ooh, 12 or so, uh, the first 12 or so seasons, and then I dipped out. Yikes. What yeah. can I say about yikes? Not it has, it has its moments, but mm. it has its moments, but it is, it is not, it is not it ad- anymore. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's the same with The Simpsons, mind. The same with The Simpsons. Yeah. Oh, modern Simpsons. I don't... don't even know what it is that's particularly wrong with it. Is it just oversaturation, or is there some deeper problem, or is it just a number of? Pl- I, I I can't I can't really work it out. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Because mm, the first like shame. ten seasons or so were really really good, weren't they? Yeah, I've also been watching, not like, um. Like, only casually, like, I put it on in the background every now and then, like, Spongebob, because oh, yeah. this is probably controversial. I have never seen Spongebob before this year. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just one of those shows that I'd never caught. Like, it was always on a channel that I just couldn't find or something. Yeah. And so this year, I was just like, okay, you know what, let's finally watch this this thing. And, you know, it's fun enough. Yeah, I, I grew up with it, so I've got that attachment. Definitely. Um, while not this year, last year I watched Invader Zim as well. Like I went round a friend's house and he showed me oh, all yeah. of Invader Zim, and that was fun. And I think the year before that, I watched all of. Uh, no, it wasn't the year before that because season eight came out last year. But uh, I watched all of Game of Thrones, and I oh, enjoyed yeah. most of it. The last two seasons, not so much, but you know. I wanted to start it, but then everyone was like, don't bother. So I'm like, okay, I wouldn't start it then. Which is a shame. Mm, that's, that's fair enough. Um, other than that, though, I mostly just stick in my Doctor Who bubble. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I just, it's, there's lots of Doctor Who to watch, but I just, I, I always end up revisiting Russell's era, or Tom's era, or some of Charlton's era, and it's just, ugh. I should keep up with these TV shows. I'm meant to be a, I'm meant to be a, a millennial. I should be modern. I should be hip. <laughs> I should be watching all these shows, <laughs> but I'm not. Although I did finish Breaking Bad recently, which was a masterpiece. Even though we bandied that word around quite a lot this 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 podcast. Yeah. Masterpiece, masterpiece, masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. Very masterpiece. Hi, masterpiece. How are you masterpiecing today? I don't know. <laughs> when you when you masterpiece, I remember. Masterpiece, you masterpiece, and masterpiece. There should be a big finished master story called Masterpiece. Just, just, just call it that. Doesn't matter what the story is, just call it Masterpiece. That probably is. Let's be real. It's probably like a short trip. No one remembers. Probably. Now that you've said it, they've probably started writing one. 
Oh no. But it's not coming out till 2030. Oh, of course. <laughs> Many years in the future. Yeah, I'll be an old man. Nick, Nick Briggs has already recorded it, but he's like, it's on his hard drive somewhere and he'll completely forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many notes that guy does have in his computer or his, or his notebook. Dear Lord, I dread to think. <laughs> anyway, is there any further questions or uh, is that it? Uh, let me consult the great notebook. Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Let, let's, let's just, I don't know, finish it off. Are you excited for Revolution of the Daleks? Relatively. Like, um... I am wary because series 12 I found very underwhelming but and I'm I'm also like wondering how the hell Captain Jack's involvement is going to benefit anything hmm. um and I'm also worried that cuz the we had the trailer and the trailer looks good uh, but it also doesn't really show much of the doctor because you know she's in prison and I'm worried it's going to be a case of, oh, she's just in prison for the whole story and then is freed in the last 10 minutes or something. Yeah. So that does that does worry me. But um, other than that, I do like what uh, the idea, like the companions have to save the day. Yeah. Um, the Dal- how the Daleks are going to be used is intriguing me. Like the, the whole Downing Street thing, that looks cool. And oh, even though... Even though Jack Robertson is kind of a crap character, <laughs> oh, yeah. I am interested. I am interested to see how he is, uh, how he is in his return, and if any of the casual audience will even remember him. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, no. But um, but yeah, that's that's all really. Um, I don't know if there's. I know there's a pating in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm really scrambling, aren't I? Yeah. I suppose my only worry. Very... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's. I guess. I guess I'm not really like a a massive. Um, oh, I hope they do this, this, and this kind of thing. I'm just like, oh, we'll see when it comes out. Yeah. Recently, my recently my um like the current era of who isn't really what I'm most enthusiastic about at the moment. It is more. Troughton <laughs> and like Hartnell and like the missing episodes and stuff. How different? The missing episode animations are what I'm like really enthusiastic about at the moment. I am yeah. looking forward to Web of Fear Special Edition. Oh, me too. Me too. The, the trailer is really interesting. I'm interested to see how they do that. Yeah, like the animation, it's odd, but you know, I'm it's, it's still cool that we'll have uh, like a longer period of who that we can just watch without being interrupted for like a recon or something. Cause yeah. there's the, there's the ice warriors, which uh, is mostly surviving, but also has an animation. There's enemy of the world, which mostly su- well, pretty much all survives. Um, yeah. Well, it does all survive. What am I talking about? The web of fear, which mostly survives, but needs one episode animated and is getting that. And then fury from the deep, which is all animated. Like that's, uh, 6 12 18 that's 24 whole episodes consecutive episodes that we can just that we can just watch and that's that's really, snowman. that's really cool that we're having yeah that i hope that one gets done next probably well so we could just have these these long periods that we can just watch instead of having to sit through like, like a slideshow with scrolling text yeah that as much nice. as i don't mind the recons yeah hmm. but anyway that's that I, you asked me about Revolution of the Daleks, and I just went on the tangent about Trouting again. Episode. I love him. What can I say? I can see why. <laughs> I can see why. Trout in his bay. Trout in his bay. Trout in his. So uh, that's the mind control again. It's, it's working. <laughs> and anyone who listens will be subject to my influence now. Yeah. You must all stand Trouting. <laughs> yes, we, we all we all must stand anyway. Trouting. We all must. <laughs> Anyway, if if, if that, that that's all, if that's all. Unless you've got anything else you'd like to talk about, anything you'd like to mention? Uh, I I think I'm I think that's about it, really, because um, because <laughs> uh, I've done a few other collabs with other people, and they've been like, uh, yeah, this this should be done in like maybe seventy minutes, and then it turns into like a three hour ramble, <laughs> so we should probably cut it short. 
yeah. But it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun chatting with you, my dude. Yes, but it's been nice. It's been nice to hear your crazy opinions outside of Twitter and in person for once. Which is nice. Yeah, you can hear my my voice. My uh, my. I was gonna describe my voice like, like smooth like butter, but that's very egotistical, and I don't know if it's even true. <laughs> so... <laughs> More like jelly babies. Oh yes. Ah well. Ah. Sarah. Anyway, you do you do your fancy outro. I'll I'll let you do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll stop okay. <laughs> okay. He, he, he's my big outro. Um. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've got some videos bye coming out you. in a few weeks, though. So people keep an eye out for that. Hopefully. Ooh, quite sexy. Um. Of course. So oh, is this Will the Maddox or is this Matt Smith? I've got on the call. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hello, it's Matt Smith. No. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, just just uh, notify me on Twitter um, when it's when this uh, thingy is, like, ready to be posted, and then I'll, like, share it and be like, ooh, woo, I did a collab. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'd be great, that'd be great. Because my previous one actually got quite a, a, about 150 views, which I'm quite happy with, so uh, this series is well and truly oh. undergoing. Yeah. Was was it a collab with someone or um? No, it was, was it with. Just it was a it was a collab with Mr. Tardis Reviews. Oh, oh, that's cool. Hmm. Wow. Did, does Mr. Tardis Reviews just um accept any anyone just popped in like, hey, can we collab? And he's like, yeah, sure. What are you trying to say about me? Oh no, I'm not. I I did I did realize like halfway through uh, halfway through saying that sentence, like oh god, this is gonna sound insulting, isn't it? But like that, that's not what I meant. You know I know, I, mean? I know. I, th- I think he was just willing I, to do some collabs with people. And, like I was, I was yeah. first in queue, so first come, first served. Yeah, because you know I, I've I've known like sort of been a fan of Mr. Tyler's review since like 2010, so he's kind mm. of. He kind of has that reputation of being one of the most popular Doctor Who fans, even though he probably isn't really. So, like, seeing him just collab with, you know, just anyone, it's, it's kind of like, oh, that's that's cool that he does that. It is. It was, it, it, it was fun. It was fun. I'd, 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 I'd put him in the top two. In the top two. <laughs> and oh. nobody done two. I'll watch his Cyber Sember series sometime because oh, I'm definitely uh, watching I've been them. Putting I'm, it off, and, well, I've yeah, seen them all like twice I've, already. I've been putting them off until they're all out, so I can like binge watch them all. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you get on with your day, unless uh, you, you want to keep on chatting. Yeah. Or like, do you want to get on with editing? the podcast or whatever i'll just I edit mind. out any mention of the word sexy so i can get it down to about 10 minutes oh yes of course sexy <laughs> sexy 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 yeah. but anyway it was fun it was fun chatting with you it was yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't too. i wouldn't object to doing it again sometime oh well that, that's that's nice to hear i'll uh i'll see how popular series one goes and then i'll see about getting some people back on that oh, that'd be great that'd be great anyway okay bye thanks, thanks again bye my dude see ya see you chat bay Oh, see, see a curse of Fenric, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>